Well, good morning, uh, church family. I hope that you are well. I hope that you are uh, inside and safe uh, with, sadly, no reason to leave the house. Let me tell you a story. I woke up uh, about 6.30 this morning, looked out the window, just rain, and I thought, brilliant, just raining. Man, it's, it's going to be unpleasant, but um, we're going to be able to have service. And then I uh, spoke to Mike Decker about 8 o'clock, and, and we both agreed, just raining. Uh, it's going to be unpleasant, but we're going to be able to have service. Uh, and almost as soon as Mike and I had finished talking, um, it started sleeting for about 10 minutes, and that was about an hour and a half ago, and all is done now. since then is, uh, is snow. So uh, I hope you know my heart. I hope you know that I'm very, very uh, reluctant to um, cancel church just feel very heavy-hearted about having to make that decision. But uh, I walked from our from our front door to the church's front door, uh, and I was slipping around and, and had to catch myself a couple of times, uh, and it's only got worse since then. Um, so there's just no way we could guarantee your safety on our campus this morning, um, which is a great shame two weeks in a row. Uh, but uh, God is good, uh, and we trust him. Uh, and we're going to uh, continue to trust him and look forward to when we can be together uh, the next time. Let me remind those of you who are involved in our marriage course that that will continue this Tuesday night at 6.30. Uh, Rachel and I are able to watch this week's material already, um, and it's just so helpful and so encouraging and so gospel-centered and down-to-earth. Um, so, again, make plans to be there. Uh, if you are involved in that. Uh, continue to pray, of course, for Miss Margaret Poston. She's still in the hospital there in Maryland. Uh, she has uh, good days and bad days, I think, by her own admission. Um, so do pray for her. Uh, I know she'd love to hear from you. So if you would like her number, please just uh, call me or send me a message, uh, and I'll uh, let you have uh, that number. That's her direct phone number there uh, into the hospital. Uh, continue to pray, uh, as we mentioned on Wednesday, for the uh, threats to uh, religious liberty, both in Denmark and in France. Uh, and, you know, these threats don't exist out there in the ether. These are, uh, this is specific legislation that would affect the work of, of our Free Will Baptist missionaries, and of course, uh, every evangelical church in France and in Denmark. Uh, so ask the Lord that those uh, unjust laws would not pass. Ask the Lord that through this period of opposition, uh, many people would be saved. I'm going to read uh, Psalm 87 this morning. I think Psalm 87 is my favourite psalm. Um, I know we always say that about whatever part of the Bible we're looking at. Um, it's all my favourite, but that's okay. Psalm 87 says this, On the holy mount stands the city he founded, the Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwelling places of Jacob. Glorious things of you are spoken, O city of gods. Among those who know me, I mention Rahab and Babylon. Behold, Philistia and Tyre and Cush. This one was born there, they say. And of Zion it shall be said, this one and that one were born in her. For the Lord, him, for the Most High himself will establish her. The Lord records as he registers the peoples. This one was born there. Singers and dancers alike say, all my springs are in you. Psalm 87 uh, teaches us one valuable truth and asks us one important question. Psalm 87 teaches us that, that Jesus is Lord of all. And then Psalm 87 asks us the most important question. Is Jesus our Lord? First of all, Jesus is Lord of all. Verse 1 tells us that this uh, psalm written by the sons of Korah uh, deals with Jerusalem. On the holy mount stands the city he founded. Uh, we know that uh, the temple was in Jerusalem. The, the, the physical manifestation of the Lord's presence in the Old Testament uh, was there in Jerusalem, in that, in that gorgeous, glorious temple building uh, that would have been visible for miles around and would have dominated uh, the city of Jerusalem. Verse 2 tells us that the Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwelling places of Jacob. 
To be sure, the Lord loves the dwelling places of Jacob. The Lord loves the promised land. The Lord loves his people. But we remember that, that when the Lord Jesus walked on the earth as he approached Jerusalem, the gospel writers tell us that he wept over Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets. Surely uh, we're all precious to God. But that city in the Old Testament where God's presence was manifested so clearly, so powerfully in the temple. That was the pinnacle of God's affections. And, and verse 3 explains why. Glorious things of you are spoken, O city of God. So let's uh, review those first three verses together. This Jerusalem focus, this delight that the Lord has in his city, in his temple, in his presence. Now, that sounds really exclusive, doesn't it? It sounds like the people who live in Jerusalem, they're God's people, uh, and the rest of us are just going to have to to make do and mend. Uh, we're guilty of thinking the same thing sometimes, aren't we? We're guilty of thinking that, that God loves us the most, and all those other people outside are, are just a little bit less lucky. Look at verse 4 with me. This is where it gets really cool. Among those who know me, I mention Rahab and Babylon. Behold, Philistia and Tyre and Cush, this one was born there, they say. Now, if you're in the Old Testament and you are listing some places where the Lord is known, where the Lord is worshipped, I wonder what cities you'd mention. Jerusalem, of course, maybe the cities in the north, maybe the cities of refuge uh, where the Levites were from, maybe Tishbe where Elijah came from. You wouldn't mention these cities. Rahab, which of course stands for uh, stands for Jericho, which opposed the Lord's people as they entered the Promised Land. Babylon, the fiercest enemy of God's people. Philistia and Tyre and Cush, pagan cities with pagan believers worshiping pagan gods. The psalm says, "This one was born there." They say, because Jesus is Lord of all. And when we come to Jesus, no matter what our background is, no matter what our past life has been, we are accepted and welcomed as valuable as anyone. Those worshippers who came from Babylon and, and Rahab, from Philistia and Tyre and Cush, the Lord accepts them as if they were born in Zion, as if they were born in Jerusalem. No second class citizens amongst the people of God. Verse 5 continues, And of Zion shall be said, this one, this one and that one were born in her, for the Lord Most High himself will establish her. The Lord records as he registers the people, this one was born there. We think of Nicodemus in John 3, don't we? Jesus saying, you must be born again. And Nicodemus not really understanding what the Lord is, is speaking about. I think that's what this verse is, that's what this psalm is getting at as well that when you're born again, you're born again into the city of God, and God writes down your name as if you were born and raised in Zion. So whatever sins you're battling with now, remember who you are. Remember that you're one of God's people, and that he gives us the power to live like it. Whatever sins you're ashamed of from the past, remember that the Lord has forgotten them. And whether you were born in, in Babylon or or Rahab, or Cush, or, or whether you came up worshipping false gods, whether you have sin that you are ashamed of, Jesus is still your Lord, and he is not ashamed to be your God. That's the, the final challenge, the final question that this psalm leaves us with. Verse 7, singers and dancers alike say, all my springs are in you. Wherever we go in life. We must recognise that everything good we have comes from the Lord Jesus. Everything we'll ever need comes from the Lord Jesus. When have you ever gone to the Lord and found him unable to meet your need? What have you ever got from the Lord that wasn't better, that didn't make your life better, spiritually speaking, at least? Friend, this week, make sure all your springs are in the Lord. Don't be misled and led astray by a world that wants to tell you that you can't get anything from Jesus, that you can't get anything from the church, that you can't get anything from the word. 
No friends, stick in the word and trust that those springs that Jesus provides will never run dry. Christian, you can rejoice today. Your sins are forgiven. No matter what your past is, your future is bright. Christian, you can rejoice today because you will be satisfied by a spring that will never run dry. So keep turning to that spring. Keep drinking. Keep trusting the Lord. I hope you are doing well. Please call me if there's anything uh, we can do for you. Again, we'll look forward to seeing our folks on the marriage course Thursday evening at 6.30. Uh, we'll look forward to Morning Manor Wednesday morning at 10.30. No snow on Wednesday. Uh, and no, no snow the rest of the year. Let's, let's make that a prayer request together. Thank you.